Uh, welcome back to the YouTube channel. My name is Nick from Australia and welcome to the Corner Post Podcast, episode number eight for your Thursday night, November 2nd, 2023. It is 8.30 p.m. Apologies about the half an hour delay. Cody just had some HIA issues that he had to pass and he just couldn't get here on time, so we had to push back a little bit, but that's all right. Cody, how are you, bro? Well, other than dealing with some HIA problems, I'm doing very well, Nick. Well, that's good. It's good to see. It's good to hear from you. I hope all is well. I know had a couple of HIA dramas on the way in, but sometimes that's just the way it goes. You can't predict. You can't predict the future. Things tend to get in the way sometimes. But now we're here. Now we're ready to go. Episode eight of the Corner Post Podcast. I hope everyone's doing good. Uh, hello to the live chat as well. Hello to Jason Reader. Hello to Jeffrey from over there in New Zealand. Viking Axe, William Pearson, SS Storm fan, Josh Rabbitohs 2023. Uh, hello to Cameron Ford, who is in the other room, funny enough. Hello, Cameron. And hello to everyone that is tuning in. If you guys are new around here, don't forget to like the stream, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you do. And also subscribe to Cody's channel um, if you haven't as well. And also, if you want to donate to the channel, feel free to do so. You've got the uh, the PayPal option there in the description box down below. You've got the Super Chat option. And you've got the Pay ID option as well if you want to donate to the channel. And last but not least, I just want to give a massive shout out to um, NRL Lids. Yours truly. Nick from Australia has joined up with NRL Lids. And um, if you guys go on to the NRL Lids website, you can get yourself a very nice NRL cap of your team's choice, whether it's a Roosters cap or an Eel or Rabbitoh or Storm, Panther, Bronco, Cowboy, whatever it may be. You go on to NRL Lids, and before you purchase your NRL cap, make sure you put in the, t the uh, discount code NFA, You'll get 10% off. So that's NRL Lids. Um, you, you'll get a 10% discount code. Put in the put in the, the discount code NFA. You save yourself you save yourself a bit of money as well. So don't forget to um, do that as well. But thank you very much to NRL Lids for um, for the support. I appreciate it. All right, Cody. We have a little bit to talk about tonight. Now, thanks to um, the November first drama now let's get into the biggest topic in rugby league at the moment Adam Fanua Blake is leaving the Warriors immediately where should he go now if you haven't read the news today you would have missed all of it Adam Fanua Blake is going to be leaving the Warriors effective immediately apparently it's got something to do with um he misses, he misses home. He misses Sydney. He wants to go back to Sydney so he's closer to his family. The Warriors have confirmed it as well. Now, I'm just going to read out to everyone what the one New Zealand Warriors have said. They did put out a statement this afternoon. And what the Warriors have said here six hours ago now, Adam Fennell Blake has requested an immediate release from his contract on compensation grounds. Warriors CEO Cameron George said the club is considering the request and there would be no further comment at this time. So, big news out of the Warriors. Massive loss for the Warriors, I might add. Cody, what is your reaction to Adam Fennell Blake wanting to leave the Warriors right now? Yeah, well, first um, got reported many hours ago and officially came out. It was a... Just a shock uh, throughout the rugby league community. I mean, he's wanting to go back to see his family. Yeah, I get it. Um, that's fair enough. But he's one of the most highest paid props currently in the NRL. And he was one of the better Warriors players um, in 2023. But for him to go, it's going to be a massive blow. And that could damage the Warriors going into next next season. But, yeah, it was just a massive shock to hear about. 
It is a surprise. I didn't see it coming. I don't think anybody saw it coming. That's why everyone was so surprised on social media this morning and throughout the day. At first, I thought it was absolute fake news. I thought, you know, the media are looking for a story. It's November 2nd now. They're going to bring up all these rumours because there's nothing to talk about. Um, we have the last bit of inter international rugby league on this weekend, and that's the last rugby league that we're going to see until February. So, um, you know, going into the rest of November, going into December, going into January, the only thing that we're going to be talking about when it comes to NRL is uh, preseason predictions and potential rumours and players back at training and whatnot. So the media are looking for stories. But this one ended up being real. Um, I saw a couple of journal journalists uh, report and I went, uh, okay, these guys have got good good sources, so it could be real. And then once the Warriors came out, I went, right, well, it's official now. So um, this is a massive loss for the Warriors. I can't comprehend how big of a loss this is. Cody, I'm going to say this. No one has said this yet, and this is just my opinion. With Adam Fanua Blake leaving the Warriors now, the Warriors in 2024 are completely screwed. They will not play finals football in 2024. They can't replace Fanua Blake. They are going to have a very tough year in 2024. Wow, that's a very big, bold call there. But yeah, they're going to struggle without Fanua Blake. And there's no one really to replace him because he's pretty much the best forward there in um, at the Warriors. But there's they... no one else. There's no yeah. one like him at the club. I mean, you got Barnett, good player, but he's not going to average 150 to 200 meters a game. The closest, the closest middle forward at the Warriors that's going to be able to do the same amount of work as a Fanua Blake is probably going to be Tohu Harris. But he's getting older as well. He's not getting any younger. He's getting on. Uh, but, you know, like, Bunty of Foul's not going to step up. Tom is not that guy. Um, Tavaga's not that guy either. I struggle to see where the Warriors go forward, where the Warriors go forward's coming from. Like, And this is not me hating on the Warriors. I love the Warriors. I want them to be successful. I want them to win finals games and be a competitive side every year, you know, fighting for that top four and top eight position. But you're taking Fanil, taking Fanil Blake out of this side is that big of a loss. I, I can't see the Warriors making the eight without him. I, I just can't. I just can't see it. Sean Johnson won't get that much room now. He'll he'll be locked up more. They'll be they'll be um be he'll be easier to get to. Tuvasa Shek's a massive return for the Warriors, but what's he gonna do when the four pack's getting rolled every week? It's I don't know, man. I love to be proven wrong, but I can't see the Warriors doing anything next season with Fanil Blake not there. I just can't see it. Yeah, that's fair enough, but too early to say. You never know. But uh, Warriors, they're, they're going to definitely struggle. I'll tell you what, Cody, where, where should he go? I mean, there's been a few talks today. I mean, Shane Flanagan come out on radio um, this afternoon and said that he is definitely interested. So the Dragons apparently are the favourites for him. Um, I imagine the West Tigers will be interested. I imagine the Sharks and the Bulldogs will be looking at it. Apparently, he wants to go back to Sydney. So you can rule out all the other teams. You can rule out the Queensland teams. You can rule out Canberra and Melbourne, Newcastle. Now, the situation with Fennell Black, I mean, I can't imagine Manly could afford him. I can't imagine Parramatta could afford him. The Roosters doesn't make any sense. I can't imagine South Sydney being able to afford him as well. I can't imagine Penrith being able to afford him. So realistically, it probably comes down to the Dragons, the Sharks, the Bulldogs, and probably the Tigers. They're probably the four clubs that make the most sense. So again, I could be wrong and he could end up somewhere else, but what club do you see him going to? Yeah, it's a really tough one because he's come out and said well, that it's he wants to return, wants to stay in Sydney. So I guarantee might be Roosters, might be Bunnies. We've got plenty of props. Um, don't see him going to Penrith. I mean, that'll be a 
Oh, my doesn't Jock off sense. Sorry. Doesn't make sense. Um, I think the two clubs I see him going to are the Dogs and the Tigers at this stage. Okay. See, I think the Dragons probably have the most money, to be completely honest. I mean, if they... If they want to do a swap deal, maybe the uh, Dragons can offer him maybe Francis Molo and a Jaden Sewer for a Fanil Blake. Because you've got to remember, Fanil Blake's on almost a million dollars. And I'd imagine, you know, Jaden Sewer's contract's probably about 500. Molo's probably about three to four. So it's probably a close deal. Um, I reckon that could be a good, a good option. Maybe a player swap. Molo and Sewer for AFB. I'm going to say he goes to the Dragons or the Sharks. I reckon it'll be one of them. I'll say the Dragons for now. Cronulla wouldn't shock me because I can imagine Cronulla, they need like they need a, an, an elite middle forward. And so do the Dragons. So I'm going to say he goes to the Dragons. Yeah, that's fair. But I'll stick with the Tigers at this All stage. Right. Dogs. I won't say the Dogs really because they've got too many players signed at the moment. Now, the Bulldogs reckon they've got more money with these fucking third-party deals. I mean, what are they, the Roosters now? Jesus Christ. Well, anyway, for Neil Blake, it's a massive, massive loss. For me, it would be the Dragons or the Sharks he ends up at, but you're, you're going to say the Tigers? Fair enough. Yep. Tigers at all the games. Now, speaking of players staying at clubs, how about this? Tom Dearden. Will Tom did and stay at the Cowboys? Now, apparently, um, one of the Cowboys higher-ups have come out and said that there's no chance he'll leave. Um, and, you know, apparently a few clubs are looking at him. Again, we spoke about the Dragons before with Fennell Black. They're, they are apparently very interested in Tom Dearden. Um, I can't imagine what kind of price they would throw at Tom Dearden. But, look... As a Cowboys fan, I hope he stays with us. I can't really imagine. I can't think of any reason why he'd want to leave us. Um, Tom Dearden's our follow for the next ten years, as far as I'm concerned. But Cody, will Tom Dearden stay at the Cowboys? I'm definitely going to say he will stay at the club. I mean, it just doesn't make sense for um, him to go to a different club. I mean, yeah, Cowboys were all over the place usually, but he has been on a roll. Um, being one of the more better players in 2023 for your club. So, to be honest, I think he would just stay at the Cowboys for good. I think the thing with Tom Dearden is, Cody, I think the Cowboys are going to work out right. What is Tom Dearden worth? How much a season should we be paying Tom Dearden? And you got to think, okay, Tom Dearden, he's played State of Origin. He's played in a he's played in a final series. Um, he's potentially the next Queensland half after Cherry Evans or Munster. So you got to think about that as well. Look, if if I'm the Cowboys, I'm giving Tom Dearden close to nine hundred thousand a year. Like you got to think about you got to think about the bigger picture here. If Tom Dearden went to the market, if he was on the open market, which uh, well, he is now at the moment. I mean, he can negotiate for a deal for 2025, basically now. I reckon a bottom-tier club like the Tigers would offer him fucking probably close to a million bucks. But the Cowboys might only be able to offer him 850. I'll tell you, I reckon 800 to 900 is fair for Tom Dearden. I think 900 is what you got to throw at him to keep him. I think that's what they got to do. 800 to, non 800 to 900 thousand. Yeah, I hundred percent agree with that. But if he wants to, if a different club wants a higher offer, and well, he'll make this choice. But I don't see Dean going I anywhere. Say, I can't imagine him nope. leaving. I, I, I can't imagine him leaving. I know he started his career at the Broncos, and I understand that. And it wouldn't shock me if the Broncos try to get him back for a plan after Reynolds. Wouldn't shock me, but. I mean, it, it it doesn't make any sense for him to leave. It really doesn't. I'd be upset if he left, but um, Tom Dearden, I think he'll be staying at the Cowboys. Hopefully for the rest of his career anyway. Yeah, he'll now, stay at the Cowboys. Of, oh, speaking yeah. of signing, um, Jai Arrow has re-signed with the Rabbitohs. Cody, how many years did he re-sign for? It was for a couple, it was about four years, wasn't it? 
I think it was till 2027, I believe. Okay, so another four years. 26 what, or 27, you, one of them two. What are, well, what are your thoughts on it? Do you think it's a good move from the Ramados to, to keep Gyro at the club? Yes, I definitely think it's a well-deserved um, re-sign. I mean, there were murmurs about him going elsewhere, but I didn't see him leaving the club. He's been at the Bunny since 2021 or 20. Yep. Uh, he's been one, one of our better uh, forwards. But unfortunately, this year, a bit, a bit under the injury cloud. But yeah. going, I think it's a great signing for him um, to stay out of the club. Preferably, I would prefer to have him in the back row, but he can play okay. in the front as well. But it's great to see him stay at the club for another couple of years. I think it's a very smart decision considering... There are talks that Tom Burgess could move on, so that Souths are trying to lock up a lot of their experienced forwards. And I think Jai Arrow is one of those guys now where he's been around for a while, um, very experienced. Again, he might come off as a, as a bit of a character on social media and whatnot and some videos that the public may see. But, I mean, really, you know, if you have a look at the big picture, I mean, Jai Arrow is a very experienced forward and, I think it's a really good thing for the Bunnies to re-sign him for a couple more years. Um, you know, he's an origin representative player. He's a quality player. So, very smart move from South. And, you know, he can play back row. He can play in the middle. It doesn't seem to bother him where he plays. So, he does no. a really good job regardless. I, personally, I'd play him in the middle. I think you'll get more out of him in the middle. But, really smart move from the Bunnies. Yeah, and I don't see the... Club re-signing Burgess from um, the end of next year. I think he'll just go to um, the UK or something with, yeah, him, with Sam yeah. Burgess. Well, apparently Warrington are already interested in him. Sam Burgess is the coach. Tom Burgess is the coach's brother. It makes sense. So we'll see what happens with Burgess. But um, South re-signing Joe Arrow, very good move from the um, the Bunnies. Yeah, great movie. Now, speaking of re-signings, we're going to get into the Jordan McLean one now, which a lot of people might laugh at this, but I really don't care what people think about Jordan McLean. Jordan McLean, for me, is a very good player. Now, the Cowboys have re-signed Jordan McLean on a one-year deal. Now, Cody, when I first heard about the news that we were going to re-sign him, I was a little bit critical of it. I thought to myself, he's getting old. We should be investing in the younger kids. But then I thought to myself, you know what? It wouldn't hurt to re-sign him when you think about it. Have some experience at the club. You don't want to have a team that's got way too many young fellas and not enough experience. So I think keeping McLean for one more year, giving the young kids another year to, you know, to develop and to um, to get better. Like, I think Jordan McLean's at that age now where he might even come off the bench and, let you know, let the young fellas start and rip in. So, look, some would have went in a different direction. Some would have re-signed him. But as a Cowboy supporter, I have got no problem with Jordan McLean re-signing for one last year at the Cowboys. What's your take on the McLean re-signing with the Cows? Yeah, um, for one more year at least. I mean, yeah, it's just showed experience. Got so many... So many young forwards going through that through the Cowboys system. I mean, yeah, if he even comes off the bench and has some younger fellas um, start after then him, I think that's a great great thing for him. Well, see, Cody, I've spoken to you privately about this, and next season when the Cowboys name their team for you, um, you know, round one and our best seventeen, I am itching. I want to see Griffin name starting in the front row. I would love to see. McLean on the bench. I think it'd be a much better rotation, personally. Um, yeah, not much, not much more to say on this. I mean, McLean's been around for a while. You know, he was at Melbourne, won a comp down there, came to the Cowboys in 2018. So he's been at the club for five years now, and we're going to give him one more year. So it'd be six years at the club, and I think it's good. For, I think it's good for us to keep him for another year. Just good experience. Yeah, and that's what you need. I mean, if he, well, if he didn't re-sign the club, then what are you going to have? You're going to have less and less experience and just a couple of young, yeah. 
fellas with who with what they don't know what to do. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to have too many young fellas in the side and be like, okay, in this situation, we're not sure what to do. We're a bit lost here. We need some leadership. We need some direction, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, I think it's a great move to keep McLean for one more year. Um. All right, let's move into some other topics now. And Cody, there's been a lot of talk. And again, it's only talk. This is just an opinion sort of statement. This isn't a rumor that, well, apparently it's a rumor, but nothing official or anything. Should Jack Wellsby come to the NRL? If you don't, if you don't know who Jack Wellsby is, he's the fullback for St. Helens. He's been playing fullback for England in the uh, free game series against Tonga. And he's been he's actually now the youngest captain for England in rugby league history. And um well Jack Wellsby, I mean, if you've seen him play, you know how good of a player he is. Um should he come to the NRL Cody and test himself in the big leagues? What do you reckon? Should Jack Wellsby come on over or do you think he should stay in the Super League for a bit longer, then come to the NRL later? Yeah, this one is a tough call. I mean, Jack Wellsby is one of the best players in the Super League and yeah, he's the um, fullback for the three, three games series against Tonga at the moment. Yeah. But it depends on really if he wants to come and it depends on the contract um, that he's offered as well. And I think he would preferably to play fullback. Yeah. And, and it's not really that much on the market at the moment for a fullback, but I definitely... Um, could see Jack Wells be coming in the future. I think, yeah. I think he might stay in the Super League for another year or so, and yeah. then I think he can come to the NRL after that. Yeah, look, I, I was going to say, I think 2025 will be the year Jack Wells becomes to the NRL. I can't see him coming next year, for 2024, but I think 2025 makes a lot of sense. I feel like... There is a rumor going around, and honestly, it makes a lot of sense. I reckon Jack Wellsby might end up at the Roosters, and I'll explain why. I reckon Luke Keary, I reckon 2024 will be Luke Keary's last year at the Roosters. I reckon Keary will move on and go to a different NRL club. And I reckon Jack Wellsby will come to the NRL. He'll play in, play 5 alongside Sam Walker. And it'll be Wellsby and Walker. Wellsby can play fullback and 5'8". Um, very good 5'8 as well. More of a fullback, but can play both positions very well. I'm going to say 2025, Jack Wellsby ends up at the Sydney Roosters. I know that might not that might not go down well for a few people, but I reckon that's what's going to happen. That's my prediction. Yeah, that's a fair call. Yeah, 2025, I see Wellsby um, coming to the NRL. Well, I'm not really too sure at this stage. I reckon the Roosters. I reckon they would. I reckon they could offer him a deal, maybe about five hundred thousand a year or something. I'm not sure what the price range would be for Jack Wells, but I'd say between it'd be between five and seven hundred, be a decent contract. And um, the Roosters makes a little bit of sense. I think the Dragons make sense. I think the West Tigers could make sense. There's a few teams. That could make sense. For, maybe even the Gold Coast, if Foreign retires. Maybe that could be an option. But, um, or even Canberra. Canberra Raiders makes fucking sense too, considering that I haven't got a 5 8 right now. But I reckon he should come to the NRL. I think, it, I think he'd be, I think he'd do well over here, bro. Yeah, I would definitely agree as well. But it would be a ma- massive surprise. Um, maybe Canberra, you, maybe Canberra um, doesn't make sense. Points. I reckon if Wellsby wants to come over early, I reckon Cameron would be a good fit for him. Yeah, he can play fullback or 5'8 at the Raiders. Cameron, I mean, I mean, who's that? What is Cameron spying going in the next year? It's a, it's a lost course. I, yeah, it's, it's all over the place. You only got Fogarty and I think they're going yeah. to have Starling. Or yeah, Denny Starling, Lee. yeah. Not sure what they're going to do with the rest of the team. But yeah, Cameron could be an option for him as well, for sure. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, Cody, some news out of the Dragons. I think it was yesterday it was reported. They are, the St. George of the Warrior Dragons, they are prepared to offer Manu over a million dollars a year. More money than he would get at the Roosters. I think 
It's 300000 more at the Dragons than what he would get at the Roosters. Dragons apparently very interested in Joseph Manu. I can't say I blame them. Joseph Manu is a quality player. I mean, I'd be I'll, if Manu was available, I'd be fucking interested as well. But can you see him going to the Dragons, Joseph Manu? No, I just don't see it. I mean, whenever this popped up in the last day or two, I think it's just completely ridiculous. But if he takes that offer, then. Yeah, um, good on him, but I just don't see it happening. It just feel weird seeing Joey Marnie go into a different club. I feel like Joseph Marnie would have to make a bit of a sacrifice here. Do you stay at the Roosters and play in the centres and you won't get as much ball as you would at the Dragons? You go to the Dragons, you're going to be playing either fullback or 5'8". You're touching the ball 10 times more than you normally would. You're going to have the spotlight a lot more on you. You're going to be more involved in the game. And I feel like Joseph Manu is too good of a player to not have not have much ball. I feel like, again, I don't think Manu would be a great six. I think he'd be a great number one week in, week out. I really do. We saw how good he was for New Zealand in the World Cup last year. At fullback, he ended up winning the golden boot, for fuck's sake. So, I mean, Joseph Manu, I, I have no doubt in my mind he'd kill it at fullback week in, week out. It's just a matter of if he wants to leave the Roosters because I think he's been there since he was like 16, 17, 18. He's been at the Roosters a long time. So, but hey, Adam Reynolds was at CS all his life and then ended up going to the fucking Brisbane. So, who knows? But money talks, doesn't it, Cody? M money talks. Yeah, money talks. And I know that from the recent experience with Reynolds. But yeah, you just never know. Joseph Money would get offered free to 400 more. He'd get free to 400,000 more at the Dragons than what he would at the Roosters. So, we'll see. And and plus, with all due respect, Manu's, Manu's already won two comps at the Roosters. So, what's he, what's he got to prove there? Does he want to be a one-club player or does he want to try and be a player on his own? Because, I don't know, maybe maybe a change of scenery for Manu would be a good thing. Yeah, uh, that's true as well. Yeah, I mean, yes, you're, he's already won two comps with the Roosters. Mate, if well. I was an NRL player and I won two comps at, at the same position and then a couple of years later into my career, I got offered elsewhere to play a position where I'm going to get the ball a lot more and I'm going to be more involved in the game, you'd almost fucking take it. Yeah, you would definitely take it. I, if I was Manu, I'd leave. I'd leave, to be honest. Now, let's move yeah. on. Speaking of the Roosters, let's get into this. What a mess. Should Joseph Suli'i backflip on Rugby Union? Now, in case you haven't been following the news in the Rugby Union lately, the Wallabies are in absolute turmoil. Uh, the Wallabies head coach, Eddie Jones, has been sacked or he stood down, whatever you want to call it. So Eddie Jones is no longer there. He's not. He's not the top. He's not. He's not the top dog anymore. He's gone. Wallabies looking for a new coach. Wallabies in fucking turmoil. Suli is meant to be going there next year. Should he backflip on the deal and stay in the NRL, Cody? What's your take on this whole Suli rugby union thing? Yeah, the tough one. But I think even though Suli did sign. Well, this year, I think from 2025, I think I think he should still go to rugby union. Wow. But don't be surprised if he does but back flip out of it though. I'll tell you what, with everything that's happened with rugby union and the Wallabies and the Eddie Jones saga and the board drama and everything there, like you know the whole mess at R rugby Australia, the whole fucking drama with the Wallabies. If you're Suoliti, why would you even go? I'd, I'd be backflipping right now. I'd be calling call my manager right now and going, I'm backflipping on this. I'm not going to fucking rugby union. This this whole thing's a mess. Well, why would you go? And Joseph Suoliti probably wouldn't be able to stay at the Roosters because their back line is fucking overflowed. I got Tedesco. I got Tupo. I got Billy Smith. I got Dom Young. I got fucking Manu. The back line's fucking overloaded of players. So what do you do? Like, 
still eating. If, if he backflips back, back on Rugby Union, he won't be able to stay at the Roosters because they won't be able to fucking afford him. He'll have to go to a different yep. NRL team. Maybe... M- Maybe Sully goes to the Dragons, not Manu. I don't know. But, bro, I'd be backflipping for sure. What a mess. Yeah, that's a fair call, but you just never know. I mean, no one really pays attention to Union that often as we talk about rugby league, but you never know. I don't really watch rugby union. I can't even remember the last time I watched a game of rugby union. I think I nearly fell asleep. I can't remember. It was a long time ago, but... My God, if, if you read the news and you see everything that's going on with Eddie Jones and players not getting picked and the whole drama of him getting sacked and whole, that whole situation, you would be an idiot to go play with them right now. That whole thing is a mess. Yeah, fair I'll be enough. I'd be backflipping, bro. I wouldn't be going to Rugby Union. Yep. Fair but anyway, enough. we'll we'll see what Sula he does. He might still go, but... We'll see. Uh, on to the final topic, and then we'll get into the um, tips for the weekend. Should the NRL bring back the NRL nines? Now, the reason I brought this up is because now we get these preseason tournaments like we had this year. Um, fucking, you know, mainly winning the preseason challenge. Blah blah blah. Should we bring back the NRL nines, Cody? This is a tournament that was very popular. I think everyone enjoyed it. Should we bring back the nines? Oh, well, definitely should. I mean, they were very exciting games, nine, 18 minute um, times for all of them. And yeah, that usually kicked off the season, usually in early to mid February. But they yeah. should definitely yeah. bring it back. I think they should as well. I mean, you got to work out the best time to play it because you know at the start of February you got you got the World Club Challenge, you got the All Star Game, then you got the preseason game starting and I think it's the third week of February or the second week of February. I feel like if you, if you're going to bring back the nines, I reckon you do it. Fuck, you you probably got to do it the first week, first weekend of February to be honest. Yeah, and we have not seen the nines since 2020, I believe. When, yes, it was in Perth. It was in Perth. Yeah, I mean, they finished it in 2017, didn't bring it for two years, and then out of nowhere, it came back in 2020. And I don't know, the before Cowboys. COVID, if they were going to continue to do the nines in 21 and for, after that, if it wasn't for COVID, who knows? Last time the NRL nines happened, the Cowboys were the two-time nines champs. The only two-time champs. And holy fuck! Viking Axe. Holy shit. With the $100 super chat. What the fuck? Well, that is unexpected. Viking Axe. Thank you very much for the $100 super chat. I don't know. I don't know where the fuck that came from. Did you just win some money or something, bro? Holy shit. Viking wow. Axe. Camera looking good, Nick. Raiders for life. Woohoo. Fuck yeah. My question from last night, Nick. Thoughts on that, bro? Okay. Viking Axe, thank you very much for the $100 super chat. As for your question about the Raiders, um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if they're looking good. I mean, I I don't know who that fullback is going into next year or that 5 8. So that's going to be interesting to see how cameras sort that out. But I mean, if all like, I think you know, if they sort out their spine, they'll go all right. But fuck, one hundred dollars super chat, Jesus Christ! Fuck, I didn't that wow, unbelievable! I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see that coming. Vogging axe, thank you very much for the one hundred dollars super chat. Holy shit! And if you guys want to donate to the channel, you can as well. Um, you can do super chat like Vogging Axe just did. You can do PayPal. You can do pay ID, however you want. Um, also, he's just asking about the Wigan player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Morgan Smithies. He um he signed with Canberra. He's a lock forward from the Wigan Warriors. He'll be a good buy for them. 
He'll be a good buy from him. Fuck. Logging Axe. Thank you very much for the $100. Jesus Christ. Did not expect that. That is fucking crazy. Anyway, uh, back on to the topic of the NRL Nines. You know, I think it was successful in Auckland. It was successful in Perth. Where would you like to see the Nines played if it does come back? Yeah, it's tough. Don't want to go to Melbourne because that's AFL territory. Oh, not Melbourne. Sin- not Melbourne. Sydney either. You don't reckon this- Sydney? No, I think they should give it a go in Brisbane, to be honest. Brisbane Nines? Yep. I reckon that should go back to Auckland. Yeah, I loved it when I was. I loved it when I was in New Zealand. I thought it was great when I was over in New Zealand. Bring back the nines and have it in New Zealand. I reckon it'd be outstanding. Yeah, I love to see that happen as well. I'm pretty sure it happened at Eden Park as well, didn't it? Yeah, have it at Eden Park. Yeah, whatever. Why not? All right, let's get into the um, international games of the weekend, and then we'll get into the game show right after that. Right, oh, so a couple of games to look forward to this weekend. We'll start with the Australia New Zealand game, Cody. Saturday afternoon at Hamilton, Australia versus New Zealand in the Pacific Championship Grand Final. How do you see it? Who wins this? Well, surely this has got to be a better game than last week. Oh, I hope go, so. go Australia by six. Score. I reckon it's going to be high scoring. I'm going 36 30. Fuck, really? Yeah. Yep, first try scorer. Ooh. I'm I'm gonna go Baldy. I'm gonna go Tino. Tino. Yep. All right. I'll I'll go Australia by 10, 24 to fourteen. Uh, first try. I'll go Munster. Munster to score. Straight away. Yep. Uh, the other game we got we got on Sunday afternoon. We out at Port Moresby. Fiji against Papua New Guinea. This game was on last week, and it was an absolute shit show. Fiji put a massive score on them. Do you think it'll be more of the same, or do you think it'll be a closer game this week? Uh, I think it'll be more more like last week. Fiji win this one. Yep. By what? 13 plus. Oh, fuck, you reckon? Yep. Yeah, I'm with you. I think Fiji will win easy too. I'm going to go Fiji by 18 points. Let's go 30 to 12. First try scorer. Buller. I'll go Dream Buller. Yeah. And the final game, um, which is England against Tonga, game three. Game three. England are leading 2-0 in the series. They're looking to go up 3-0 against Tonga. Um, from what I understand, England are going to play a bit of a weaker team, but we'll see what happens. How do you see it, England and Tonga? Do you think England go 3-0 up? Yeah, England will put a clean sweep on Tonga. England to win yeah. by 12. Yeah, I think England will be too good as well. I'll go England by 10. I'll go... 18-8, England. Yeah. First try scorer. I've got no idea because the teams aren't out, but fuck, I'll go Tom Johnson on the wing to score first. I think he's in. I'll go him on the. I'll go him first try. Fair enough. All right. It's time. It's time for the corner post game show now. I've won four games. You've won three. Last week's game went to golden point. Cracking game. Yep. And this you week just you're won. Ask, this week your likes of questions first, and um, we'll see what score I get to start off with. If anyone in the live chat reveals the answer to the questions, you know what happens. You'll be in the timeout. Don't be revealing the answers to the questions. Anyway, Cody, you ask first. My phone is lowing down. Got no access to it. It's on silent mode. The floor is yours. All right. Now, this year we saw the first time in a long time we saw back-to-back wooden spooners. Now, the last time someone went 
two or more um, water spoons in a row was the Knights. They went from 2015 to 2017. But the last time a team went for two in a row only, who was it? Was it the Eels? Was it the Magpies? Or was it the Rabbitohs? Wooden spoons? Yep, back to back only, not more than two, two in a row. Only two in a row. Oh, it's got to be Parramatta. Oh, yeah, Parramatta. That is correct. 2012 and 2013. Yeah, I remember 2012 because they were dog shit. And in 2013, I think they had a game against the Titans, and I think the loser would get last. So, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, Magpies went back to back in 98, 99, yeah. and the Bunnies, 2003 and 2004. All right, no worries. Next question. All right, a Cowboys question. All right. Cowboys beat the Knights 18 16 in round eight. Yep. Who was the first try scorer? Was it Kyle Felt, Tom Dearden, or Reese Robson? Oh, fuck. I remember this game too because we struggled to score points. We, we, at, we weren't. I remember this time of year, but we, we weren't scoring many points. Fuck. So Dearden, Robson, Felt. Um, didn't score late in the game. I think I'll I'll go Reese Robson. Fuck yes, yes, it was. I oh, know didn't score. I think he scored late in the game. Yeah, he scored the last try. Yeah, because it was I a controversial pass. I think Val might have thrown the pass. All right, next one. All right, question three. In the Warriors versus Sharks round 20 game, Warriors yep. smashed the Sharks. Who was the first try scorer from the uh, Warriors? Was, oh. it Monsignor, was it Monsignor Montoya, DWZ, or was it Afa Fenua Blake? I was at the fucking pub watching this because yeah, I, was, I was at the pub watching this fucking the start of this game. I was with CJ and Lorenzo. We'll go on the fucking combank. Fuck, we're at the pub. Yep, this was the same round that we all went to Brookvale. Yes. It was a fucking winger. I'm sure it was. I'm fucking sure it was a winger. I think it was Dallin. I'm going to go Dallin. Yep, DWZ is correct. I knew, I, knew, I knew it was a winger. I was just thinking, fuck, which one was it? Fuck, well, I'm going all right tonight. Three out of three. Fuck. Come on. All right, question four. In the Rabbits' first mean league game in round four, the yep. game was decided in Golden Point by a field goal. Who kicked the field goal? Was it Lachlan Latrell Ilias. Mitchell, Lachlan Ilias, Lachlan or Ilias. Cody Walker? Yes. Lachlan Ilias. I remember it well. 13-12, wasn't it? Yep, that's correct. And Saturday Cody night got game? Double in that game. Yep, it Saturday that, night. I think it was that 7.30 game. I do remember it, actually. Yep, I was at the game with Lorenzo and Moxley. Oh, poor Lorenzo. He must he would have been losing it. Yeah, he was. I want I'm on a fucking roll tonight. All right, final question. Tough one. Yeah. So the uh, Bulldogs versus Eels, King's birthday holiday game. Jeez. Eels flogged the dogs. What was the score? Uh... Was it 38 nil, 34 12? Or 30 points to 18. Okay, it wasn't close. So 30 to 18 definitely is getting scratched off the list. What was the other one? 38 nil or 34-12. The Bulldogs did score. I'm, I'm fucking sure they did. I'll, I'll go 34-12. Fuck. Yes. I got, I got them all right. <laughs> That's I'm a fu that's fucking brilliant from me. Five out of five. You know you need a miracle. You need to get all five right just for us to, for you to even be a chance. To, the only way you can win is if we go to Golden Point for the second week. Yeah, I've, I've, I haven't gotten any five. I haven't gotten five in a row yet. The odds of you winning tonight are probably about a hundred to one right now. Yeah, put on fifty bucks. Unreal. 
Oh, that's fucking funny. All right, my questions. All right, let's go. Right. If if you win this, like, if you manage to get this to the golden point, fuck him, hell. Right, right, let's start with a rival's question, Rooster's question. In round two, when the Roosters beat the Warriors, who scored a double in that game? Was it Jackson Paulo or was it Daniel Tupo? Who scored a double? Fucking both of them is. Um, was it, uh, was it Daniel Tupo? Oh, it was Jackson Paulo. As I know he played against us um, the yeah. following week. Yes, he did. Oh, he I've did. already lost. Well, let's see what score you end up with. I mean, we'll, we'll see how you go. All right, let's go to round number three, Knights-Dolphins game, all right? Cody, for the Newcastle Knights, who scored a double for them in that game? Was it Lachlan Miller or was it Dane Gagai? Who got a double in that game? Lachlan Miller. Correct. Well done. I know Gagai scores every now and then, but I don't think he... I don't think he got a double at all for that game. No, nah, it was Lucky Miller. Well played. Well played. Righto. Next question. Let's go to the Dogs. In round three, when the Bulldogs beat the Tigers at Belmore, who scored two tries for the Bulldogs that day? Was it Josh Adekar? Was it Matt Burton? Or was it Hayes Parham? Who got a double that day? I don't think he played much this year. Was it ha- Hayes Parham? It was the Fox. I didn't think it was obvious. It was the Fox. He had a double. He had a 13th minute and a 28th minute try. He had a first half double. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh. Next question. Cody, in round number three, when the Titans beat the Storm 38 to 34, who scored the first try of the game? Was it Khan Pereira? Was it Nick Meaney? Or was it Aaron Schoff? Was it two Titans players and a Melbourne player? Hmm. Or was it Carl Pereira? It sure was. That was lucky. Carl Pereira, he's a very good young young kid, I'd say. He's got a big future. He does. But if he stays at the Gold Coast, he won't have a big future. He should leave. No. Go to Brisbane. Right. Yeah. Go, go there. All right. Last question. Cody, in round seven, when the Broncos beat the Titans on the Gold Coast, 43 points to 26, who is the player that kicked the field goal for the Broncos? Was it Adam Reynolds or was it Reese Walsh? It was Reese Walsh. It was Reynolds. Fuck. In the 79th minute, I might add. Who would have predicted that score on 43-26? Yeah, I was at the game, too. I remember it was a big crowd. It was about 20,000 there. It was a good atmosphere that night. Yeah, Broncos, oh, Titans, you always have a great crowd, though. Mate, the Gold Coast only get a crowd because the other teams have fucking got all the fans coming to the game to make it look good. Um, yeah. All right. Well, I won the game show tonight, five out of five. You're two out of five. I mean, it was a good game, nonetheless. Yep, yeah, so that means you've got five. I've got three now. You need to catch up. You need to catch up. All right, Cody, that wraps up the podcast, bro. Thank you very much for a good show, my friend. No worries. I'm glad we got the podcast and a bit of a delay. But yeah, next time we we go live, I should be recovered from my HIA by then. Yeah, no, it's all right, bro. I wouldn't stress about the about the slight half an hour delay. I mean, everyone everyone's still tuned in, so everyone understood. No big deal. Thank you all for watching episode eight of the Corner Post podcast. If you're new around here, don't forget to like the stream and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't subscribed to me yet, make sure you do. Also subscribe to Cody. His um, his YouTube channel link is in the description box down below. And also, once again, thank you to Vogging Axe for the $100 super chat. We really appreciate that here at the Corner Post podcast. So thank you very much for that. To everyone in the chat, 
Enjoy the rest of your Thursday night. I'll see you guys tomorrow for the Premier League tips and whatnot. Until next time, have a good one, folks. See ya.